I just finished working on this project and I thought I'd do a quick breakdown of the materials and go into the blender file, go into the materials and maybe there will be some useful information you can pick up from this. So this is what the uh, blender file looks like. As you can see, it's uh, the model is very uh, minimal. I only modeled the tip and it's an extremely simple model. If I activate the wireframe, it's basically just a couple of cylinders and uh, a sphere at the tip. Nothing special here. There are four materials I made for this, uh, excluding the paper material, which is just a secondary element. There's the acrylic, which is this clear part at the uh, in the back, the plastic at the tip, this metal part, and the ball at the tip. So I'm going to go into each of the materials and uh, see uh, what components I used and how I built up the final materials. And here you can see a preview of the scene rendered. Uh, I am rendering this with uh, baked uh, proxy textures because uh, rendering the final materials, the actual materials, would take uh, too long for the viewport to, uh, to update. So I'm, I'm just using proxies. In case you're interested, uh, these are just uh, baked textures for the color, metalness, uh, roughness and normal, uh, which I baked in 2K. Uh, that's just so I can uh, visualize what the scene looks like and I use it primarily for lighting. But let's check out the materials, starting with this uh, clear acrylic here in the back. This is what the node tree looks like. Uh, I'm using just a flat color, just a white color, and I only built up a roughness and height channel for this. And the roughness channel goes into the both the roughness and the transmission roughness of this material. So let's uh, start looking into these component node groups I made. The first thing I did was create a base bump layer for the plastic. I felt that if the plastic was just flat, it would look kind of boring. So I uh, made a basic uh, noise texture just to use as an underlying bump layer. This is what it looks like. It's just a noise texture with a very low detail level. Next, I added some tiny uh, divots into this material. If you look at the reference that I shot, uh, you can see some really small damage on the surface. So that's what that was supposed to be. And these are two noise textures that I mixed together and then I crushed the blacks just so I would retain uh, some of these uh, spots. The reason I'm using two noise textures is that I wanted to decrease the density of the of the mask. So you, as you can see, they have two different scales. One is at uh, scale 100 and the other at 25. So by mixing them before adding the color ramp, I can use this to change the density of the spots. So if I turn this down, they are distributed more evenly and there are more. And if I turn it up, the amount will go down and they will be more clustered, which looks a bit more natural and closer to the reference. I'm using these uh, small divots in the roughness channel, uh, increasing the roughness values in these areas and also in the height channel where I subtracted the mask from the overall height. Next, I added some random scratches, which is just a simple scratch mask. And again, I just added it to the roughness and multiplied an inverted version with the height map. Then I added some directional scratches, which I took from other reference I found online. And this is just uh, two stretched noise textures. Uh, I multiply them to decrease the density of the scratches, turn up the contrast, and then because I didn't want these scratches to be on the inside of the um, plastic, because the plastic is transparent, you will be able to see through it. So I wanted to get rid of these scratches on the inside. So I used a gradient using my UV map, which happened to be uh, separated into inside and outside islands. And I just created a gradient going from left to right. And with this, I could just isolate this island, which is the uh, inside surface, and then subtract that from the overall uh, mask. And this gets rid of the scratches on the inside part. Then the pen I shot as reference had a somewhat circular, uh, small 
divot, I guess, in the front of this uh, plastic part, which had a higher roughness. So I wanted to incorporate that as well. So I added this part right here, which is supposed to be like a damaged area where the plastic is uh, slightly chipped. I chose to do this procedurally using a, a gradient texture. I just added this spherical gradient and moved it around with the mapping node using UV mapping. And then I warped it with two noise textures, one for the general shape and one for the small detail. I thought this was a nice little way to break up the uniformity of the material. Uh, this element I added to the roughness, but before that I actually wanted to add some variation to it. So it's not a completely uniform and uh, clean gradient. Uh, so I just added a noise texture and overlaid it just to create a little bit of variation. And I basically did the same thing for the height map, this time multiplying a noise texture. Next I added this uh, seam at the side of the plastic where I imagine uh, the two pieces are welded together when they're after they're cast. So what I did here is I took a gradient going, going from the top to the bottom and used a color ramp to create this line. Then I warped it with a noise texture. And then I removed it from the front here using another gradient, this time a, a spherical gradient projected from the front, which looks like this. There are different ways you could create this. The way I did it is by creating a UV map that I projected from the front, adding a, a spherical gradient, and then using a color ramp to constrain it to this area. I added the seam to the roughness and to the height since it was uh, sticking out from the surface. Next I added this uh, scrape. Uh, when looking at the reference I noticed that the pen I photographed had uh, this one distinct uh, scrape on the side, uh, so I wanted to add that, which I did by adding a very dense scratch texture and then just creating a, a spherical gradient as a mask which I uh, warped a little using uh, the scratch mask just to create a slightly more natural gradient. As with pretty much everything before I added it to the roughness and subtracted it from the height map. Next I added this large scratch and the base for this I created in Affinity Photo. So this is a multi-channel stencil which I created using just uh, a straight line gel blur twice and used one for the green channel and one for the red channel. The reason I'm doing this is that when looking at the reference I noticed that uh, there were some scratches which uh, were large enough that they sort of uh, push the plastic outwards, which is uh, a bit similar to how uh, scar tissue would look on a, uh, on human skin, <laughs> but uh, that's just a side note. So when I separate the red and green channels, you can see what that looks like. And I use the red channel to subtract from the height map and the green channel to add to it, so that the actual scratch would be subtracting from the surface, but the surrounding area would be elevated. And because I used a multi-channel stencil, I was uh, able to control these elements separately. So then I just used a couple of noise textures to warp it, make it look a bit more organic, and that's it. I could have put some more effort into um, properly adding the different components individually to the roughness and the height map, but I didn't really want to bother with that, since it wasn't really that big of a deal. Instead, I just mixed the result with the height map and added a version where I mixed together the red and green channel to the roughness map. Finally, I wanted to have some uh, very dense directional scratches around the edge of this part. So I just used a scratch texture and a gradient which I multiplied with it to constrain it to this area. And again, I added it to the roughness channel. 
and subtracted it from the height channel. Finally, I um, adjusted the overall roughness with a math node, multiplying it by 1.4. Just a global adjustment at the end. Keep in mind that when you do transparent materials, uh, usually you'll have to plug the roughness output both into the roughness and transmission roughness. I forgot to do this uh, at the beginning of the project and for a while I was confused as to why it didn't look right. So yeah, keep that in mind.